Can you uh, look at me for a second? What do you think about the Mazda Speed? Which one? Yours. I like mine. All right, taking off the flange now of the intercooler. Flange? Yeah, this thing, right? It's a flange. I don't know. It flanges this to this. That's not a flange. It's a flanger. It's just like a, I don't know what you want to call a it. Shroud. A shroud. A shroud. There that's we a, go. That's the word, shroud. It's a shroud. It's a flanging shroud. Shroud flanger. All right, some twelves to take the intercooler off. Fortunately, we don't have the gun right now, so. Everything by hand. Oh, uh, these T-bolt clamps, they're really good. They never leak, they never come loose. I've never had any issues. They're really good for higher boosts, 100%. I don't want to lose any of these washers on the intercooler, man. They always fall out. Putting them to the side here is a good idea. Make sure they don't fall, get lost. That's the worst. Okay, let's pull the intercooler off. Everything's loose. Ah. So wait, now when we put it back on, we can just put it there, right? Where it's you wanna put it in the front? Be? Yeah. Just like right here? Yeah, we'll just, I have zip ties, we have zip ties. Yeah, Let's we'll put it, it here, get a better uh, air charge going in there. Sounds good, man. All right, so now the heat shield's gonna come off. A little bit of WD-40 to free him up a bit. Oh, there we go. I don't wanna break these, man. Why does everything that's bad for you smell good? Oh. Look at that exhaust manifold. So this is the JBR oil restrictor bolt. Brian recommended an even sm one with an even smaller hole, but uh, I wasn't able to get that one. Um, so I'm just gonna use this one for now and see how well it does at uh, preventing oil consumption and slight smoking. This is still restrict like more restrictive than the one that's in there, right? Yeah, the OEM one has two big holes. This one only has one small hole. Okay, so I already cracked it loose. I am going to remove it now. We might get a little bit of oil seepage coming out. Good thing is most of the oil is in the pan right now, so yeah, we won't lose that much. Not gonna lose a lot of oil, probably none. Look at that. Oh, sweet, no seepage. So, oh, okay, so you have a hole there, and you have another hole there. Caution, you're driving a Mazda. Okay, so this is the JBR. See, as you can see, the JBR hole is a lot smaller. And there's only one of them. I don't know. Smaller too. Yeah, I don't know if that hole's smaller or not. Maybe yeah, probably a little bit. So one smaller hole here, nothing on this side, and then there's another hole on this side. So this should restrict the flow and reduce smoking from the turbo at when I go wide open throttle in between shifts. And hopefully my oil consumption um, goes down. Because I only I only noticed oil consumption when we put the bigger turbo in. We did a compression test. The cylinders all have over 180 psi. Every cylinder, so. So you're burning it through the turbo seals. It's gotta be the turbo, because people have said we've seen smoke, right, so. Yeah, at the track, a lot of people are like, man, you're just you're leaving a silk screen. Yeah, oh, we don't need to pre-lube it. It's a crush washer anyways. All right, let's go. Okay, so that's gonna be there. Let me just make sure that other seal didn't fall out. Yeah, it's on there. So we gotta reuse the bottom seal, because it only came with one. So we're just gonna slide this bolt in. Actually, make sure the line is clean. Just use your finger and wipe off any sort of oil or debris. Slide this in, start it by hand. Check in the, uh, right here, this clear bin right here, down there. Give you all that I had and I traded you well. Okay, dude. Is it a 19? Let's just go with 19. Let's go with 19. It's a 19. All right, look at that. Now we can see, now we're just gonna thread it in by hand. I can see clearly now the banjo bolt. We're good, man. Hopefully uh, this doesn't starve the turbo of required oil, but they advertise that it, it restricts it just the right amount so that you don't smoke, but you still get enough lubrication and cooling. Let me tighten it down. I have no idea what the torque spec is, but I just want that crush washer to crush. I don't want to go too tight. I, wanna, I just don't want any leaks. No leaks, please. Well, after a rigorous test drive, we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Should we leave the heat shield off temporarily? I think we'll be able to see with the heat shield off. Oh, well, we got mirrors anyway. We can, we can, we can get in there. We're good. All right. Okay. Start it up. Spark plugs. Okay, so coil packs have to come off. What are these, tens? Eights. Eights. I usually keep all my old parts. So I'm gonna keep my banjo bolt in the bag and put it 
in the collection of old parts that I have. There's no point in throwing them out. Check it out. Oh, well, my balance shaft seized. Shaft seized. That is everything. My old oil pan. Oh. A little balance shaft there. <laughs> Eric just broke wind. My PCV. Those like to go on the uh, 2.0 TTSIs on the Volkswagen. It's my uh, crank timing sprocket. Timing chain below it. Rear main seal. Bunch of crap. Clutch. That clutch actually has meat on it, but uh, can't handle more than 300 foot pounds, sadly. I have a fuel gauge and I also bought a gapper, but usually with the NGK spark plugs, they're always overly big. So you just kind of have to close them a bit down to about 26 thou or up to 28 thou. I'll probably try 27 thou this time. Last time I tried 26. So maybe we'll do, well, maybe I'll do 28. I don't know, we'll see. Go for 28 and if you hit them a little too hard and they go down 27, it's no harm. Exactly. Okay, we're taking the coil packs off now. Take the spark plugs out. Holy cow, you no. really reamed those down there. Not really. Let's see how bad these are. Well, I mean, I know they're pretty bad when already. You, when did you change them? I didn't change, oh, I changed them when we first put the turbo in. So, almost like, a year. Almost a year. I took them out recently to do a compression test. So I, I, I was able to get a look at them. So they're, they're definitely worn out. How many kilometers do you have on them? Ah, uh, you don't know. 20,000? Yeah. Some people keep the same spark plugs in for, you know, 70,000 kilometers. Like, I don't know, I'm not gonna point fingers, but this guy. Look at that. Yeah, those are, look at that. I don't know, man, that's, that's bad. That's methanol, there's methanol in the gas tank. I don't know why they look like that, but they do. Oh, that might be the S STP fuel stabilizer you've been putting in. I don't know. I, the only reason why I started using the STP fuel stabilizer was because I want to make sure that there's no uh, phase separation for when I uh, have uh, methanol mixed with the gas. So it tries to try to keep Just it keep mixed a nice in. Mix. Okay, so Eric's opening up his uh, feeler gauges. Just bought this. Well, that's a spark plug gap gapping and gauge tool. We're going to use these ones because we've had success with them. But we'll use this one too. We'll actually use both of them. Let's, this is a new spark plug. see if they're just the same gap. See what both of them read. See, let's see what the current gap is on these. Okay. <laughs> what is it? It's like 42, 43. Holy shit. 43 thousandths. What kind of plugs are we putting in? We got NGK LTR7IAX. We don't know how to close the gap on spark plugs. We're thinking maybe a vice. Eric's just gonna tap them against a hard surface. Um, uh, the intercooler fins, that's a hard surface. There you go. All right, table saw. So for your spark plug install, you'll need a table saw. Hang on, let me get the gapper again. <laughs> Eric, man, Let's what did you Let's come on over here. What did you eat? Oh, that might have done something. Let's see where we're at now. Okay, I brought it down to like 32 thousandths. It's good. Whoa. Oh, that's not good. <clears throat> Schmokes. It's like 30 thousandths. A little bit at a time. We want to get it up to like about 28 thou. Oh, here we go. That looks pretty good. It's right about there. Perfect. That looks good. I can't go anymore. Yeah, it's 28. 28. We'll, we'll keep it there for now. Okay. All right, we gotta do the same thing for all four. Wait, you know what? Let's check with the feeler gauges too. We yeah. like to gap it, gap it. We like to gap it. He's blowing gap. off all the iridium that he's scratching off by using the gauge on it. Okay. Good there. We don't need to go too tight on spark plugs. Just gotta put the coils back in. I like to move it, move it. Ah! The back of my legs hurt. From all this lineage. Lineager. You're looking quite obtuse, Eric. I was almost about to pose there, but that would have been awkward. <laughs> that wasn't awkward? That was... <laughs> okay, okay. Let's put the eighters in. It's a quarter inch, eight. I don't know, millimeter. Quarter eight? Your eight millimeter. Is. Quarter inch ratchet, eight millimeter. Do I look weird? No, he's just really weird. All right. That's what I like to hear. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you gotta stop farting in the middle of cuts, eh? Just putting coils back on. That's all I'm doing. It didn't have to be this way. Oh god, that reeks. Oh god, we're getting out of here. That's potent. Spark plugs are complete, ladies and gentlemen. Now we gotta put the intercooler back on, reattach everything, and uh, go for a spin. Let's intercool our cool. Do, 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 do. 
That's what it sounds like when air goes through at a high velocity. Yeah, it was technically still vacuum. Only behind the throttle body. We learned that the hard way. Perfecto.